Hello everyone, how are you? So here I am back again with yet another question on binomial theorem. You can also call it to be a multinomial theorem question because it has got mix of both the worlds. But before I say anything else, I would like you all to look at the question first. Now, I would request you all to pause the video right here and try to solve this question on your own. All right, I hope you have made an honest attempt to solve this question. Uh, now, let's discuss the solution. So, uh, for solving this question, we would need our basic understanding of binomial theorem and of course a bit of multinomial theorem as well. Don't worry about it. I've provided you the link for these of my video lectures in the description box right below. So we are going to start here by assuming that this expansion is actually a binomial expansion with a fractional power. Okay. So I'm going to write down this expression as one plus the rest of the terms. Right. All right. And think as if this is like, you know, one plus some capital X raised to the power of two by three. Right. So we all know how to expand a binomial theorem with a fractional power. So that goes something like this. One plus two by three capital X plus two by three times two by three minus one upon two factorial X square and so on. Right. Now, since this is having a power, which is a fraction, this uh, binomial expansion is never going to stop. Right? It's going to go on and on forever. Right. So in plain and simple words, if I have to ask what is going to be the P plus one -th term of this expansion, right? I'm, I'm very sure that your answer is going to be two by three times two by three minus one, two by three minus two and so on till two by three minus P plus one upon P factorial X to the power of P. Right? So the general term, or you can say the p plus one term of this expansion is going to look like this. All right. So let's put our x back. That is going to be uh, 2 by 3, 2 by 3 minus 1, 2 by 3 minus 2, and so on, till 2 by 3 minus p plus 1. And the x that we are talking about is this, uh, you know, lengthy expression that you see over here. That's negative of 3x uh, minus 2x square and plus 6x cubed whole to the power of p. Okay. And this entire thing is going to get divided by p factorial. Right. Now, let me tell my viewers that if I want the coefficient of x to the power of 3 in this expansion, what I'm going to do is. I'm going to assume that let x to the power 3 term be obtained, obtained from tp plus 1th term. Okay. So what I'm claiming here is that this term that I have written in white over here, right, this term is responsible for giving me x to the power of 3. Okay. Now, let us now focus more on this term, which I'm showing with the zigzag in the base. Okay, so let's talk about that term separately. So minus 3x minus 2x squared plus 6x cubed to the power of p, right? If I write the general term for this, okay, so let us write down the general term for this. So for this expression, the general term is given by p factorial upon alpha factorial beta factorial gamma factorial minus 3x to the power alpha minus 2x square to the power beta and 6x cubed to the power of gamma right now let us say this general term is the one which is actually giving me x cubed right so what can I say over here? I can say here that 
Number one, the powers of x, which happens to be alpha, 2 beta, and 3 gamma, they add up to give you 3. That's number one thing I can say. And another thing which I can say here is that your alpha plus beta plus gamma will actually add up to give you a p. Now, you can refer to my multinomial uh, theorem discussion uh, whose uh, link I have provided in the description to know more about it. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to solve for alpha, beta, gamma from this expression by taking a guess at these values because it's easy to guess them as alpha, beta, and gamma, they are all whole numbers. So they belong to whole numbers. Okay. So uh, if I do that, let's have you know, the possibilities uh, written over here. So let me write down them in the column mentioned here, alpha, beta, gamma, right? So let's start by putting gamma as zero. So when I put gamma as zero, and let's say beta also as zero, alpha becomes three isn't it? So basically, I'm trying to satisfy this equation, which I'm showing with the double tick mark. And if I take my gamma as zero, I could have beta as a one and gamma also as a one. Okay. And finally, if I take my gamma as a one, then my alpha beta are bound to be zero, zero each. So I feel these are the only three cases in which you will be able to get alpha plus two beta plus three gamma equal to three. All right. Now for these expressions, let us figure out the value of p. So for this, the p value is going to be 3 plus 0 plus 0. That's a 3. For the second case, it is going to be 1 plus 1 plus 0, which is a 2. And for the third case, it's going to be 0 plus 0 plus 1, which is a 1. All right. Now, this term is actually a part of the bigger term tp plus 1, right? So let's go back. Let's go back to the expression. Coefficient of x to the power 3 is going to be 2 by 3, 2 by 3 minus 1, dot dot till 2 by 3 minus p plus 1 upon p factorial times p factorial, alpha factorial, beta factorial, gamma factorial, minus 3x to the power alpha, minus 2x squared to the power of beta, 6x cubed to the power of gamma. Okay, so I just realized I wrote x in those expressions. By the way, uh, just ignore the x's which I have written. That is minus 3x. I just read it as minus 3. Minus 2x squared, just read it as minus 2. And 6x cubed, just read it as 6 because in the coefficient, there will not be any variables, right? So I hope you can understand that. Now we have only figured out these three cases where I can actually get the value of x to the power 3. Right, so these are the only three cases of alpha, beta, gamma which generates x to the power 3. So let's write down those three cases. So the first case is where my p is 3, alpha is also 3, beta and gamma are 0 each. So this is your first case. So under this, your coefficient comes out to be 2 by 3. 2 by 3 minus 1. And mind you, when you put p as a 3, it goes to 2 by 3 minus 2, which is actually the very next term. Okay. And divided by p factorial, which is going to be 3 factorial, into 3 factorial, which coincidentally would get cancelled off. 3 factorial, 0 factorial, 0 factorial. And here you will have the coefficient as minus 3 to the power of 3 and the rest of the terms are going to vanish right because beta and gamma are zero okay so let's evaluate it finally how much does it give you so it comes out to be 2 by 3 times minus 1 by 3 times minus 4 by 3 times minus 27 upon 6 so this simplifies further to minus 4 by 3. Alright, so this was my case number 1. Let's talk about case number 2. Case number 2 is a scenario where my p is 2, alpha, beta are 1 each, and gamma is 0. So I'm talking about this scenario. p is 2, alpha is 1, beta is 1, and gamma is 0. So let's take that up. So p is 2, alpha is 1, beta is 1, and gamma is 0. Alright, so let's see. 
So what's the coefficient? Coefficient is going to be 2 by 3. And uh, the next term will be 2 by 3 minus 1. And I think this is also the last term divided by 2 factorial, okay, times 2 factorial, 1 factorial, 1 factorial, 0 factorial. And I'll have minus 3 to the power of 1 and minus 2 to the power of 1, okay. So uh, I think this further simplifies to negative 4 by 3. All right, so with this, we move on to the third case. So third case is uh, what we see here at the bottom where P is 1, alpha, beta, 0, 0, and gamma is 1. So let's look into that case. So P is 1, alpha is 0, beta is 0, and gamma is a 1. So in this, the coefficient of x to the power 3 comes out to be 2 by 3 by 1 factorial into 1 factorial by 0 factorial, 0 factorial, 1 factorial, 6 to the power of 1. So this boils down to 4. All right, so let's now club all the coefficients together. So the combined coefficient of x to the power 3 here will come out to be minus 4 by 3 minus 4 by 3 plus 4. And that's nothing but 4 minus 8 by 3. That's actually a 4 by 3. Okay. So the answer to the question is the coefficient of x to the power 3 is 4 upon 3. So guys, here you are. So I hope this video helps you to revise your binomial concepts. This question seemed to be easy, but it wasn't. It involved a lot of concepts for us, like the general term, the multinomial expansion, and I hope you really learned something new from this. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe. Stay healthy.